just want to start from the outset to say that any decision we make today may change tomorrow. In order to have the best expert advice, we have commissioned... Supercoach 360. <laughs> <laughs> the time's going up. It's recording. And now, ladies and gentlemen, time for the show. Oh, mate, 100%. Hi. We need to find out why they think it's OK to say anything. It's certainly one of the greatest challenges in the history of the game. That's what they want to try and do. Megastar to megastar! In this regard, we're leaving every option on the table. Excellent. Oh, what that, buddy? something special! You know what? Uh, that's not talent. Oh. Uh-huh. Supercoach 360! The best way to handle these things is to stay measured, stay calm, you know, live your life as normal. Unless we start finding it off the people... They're actually do it. it makes a little ordinary life feel a little bit better for that man. Makes it cool. Super Coach 360 podcast. G'day, welcome to Supercoach360, how you doing? It is Juzzy J in the coach's box once again to talk all things Supercoach with my faithful companions. Bergs is busy doing the sharing as per usual. How are you doing, Con? I'm good, buddy, how are you? Yeah, very good, man. Very, very, very good. That's I'm ex- good. I'm excited. How come? Because I've got, uh, I got something special to announce. What's, what's going on? Con, have you heard about the website? Oh, I have heard a little bit about it. Yeah, what have you heard about it? It's pretty good. Pretty good? Yeah, well, I mean, you can make your own opinion, really, because we've got a new website, and we'd love for you to check it out. Uh, it's www.supercoach360.com. Uh, we've got a bunch of contributors, a bunch of members of the team, all jumped on board uh, and are helping to put together a, a sort of a one-stop shop for all things Supercoach. Uh, it's only at the very start. We're looking to grow it and build it. Uh, so get in touch if uh, you're into making content, and, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's create something cool. Um so www.supercoach360.com. Um, we've got, actually got uh, a bunch of contributors on the show tonight. We've got uh, Brad Smith, who's going to talk some PPM. Uh, Ross Mann is going to talk uh, some Supercoach relevant players. Uh, Timmy O is going to give us the fear factor, the fear factor rating of a few players he's eyeing off. And uh, uh, Glenn Fish is going to give us some uh, team selection tips. So we've got a big show, buddy. Sounds good. Yeah, you ready to jump right Absolutely. into it? Absolutely. Let's get rolling. Yeah, let's get rolling. Uh, first of all, you know we've got to do all the usual stuff up the top. So uh, we are back on Apple Podcasts. Sorry for the delay. Figured it out. It's all fixed. Uh, so if you're listening on Apple, cheers. If not, either way, go leave us a review uh, on Apple. We'd love that. Um Group codes, uh, we want to announce a new group which has only been created in the past week. It's the Podmasters Public League. It definitely has nothing to do with Bergs, that's for sure. Um, but the code for that one, for anyone who's playing along last week and went, wait, they mentioned the league and didn't get a code. The code for the one you're allowed to join is <laughs> 104397. That's 104397. It's the Podmasters Public League, uh, public group, sorry. So you can play against all the podcasters all in one place as a member of the public. See how you rank amongst uh, all the content creators out there. Maybe get yourself a bit of confidence on uh, how good you're going to be at it because if we can do it, anyone can. Um, also join our group, uh, the Supercoach 360 overall group. That's 790873, 790873. Um, and of course, we've still got the winner ring promotion. So with trials starting this weekend, footy out and about, um, if you can get yourself a shout out or a little video, record it on your phone, send it through to us at the page on Facebook, Supercoach360. You'll go in the draw to win a ring from the good people at supercoachchampion.com. Don't just, you can you know, um, use the others as well. We have Twitter and we have um, Instagram as well. So don't just give it all to Facebook. Use the other platforms, Jazzy. Don't hold out. <laughs> Share the love. All right. I mean, go for it. What? A little bit more emphasis. Are you, you got, well, have you got these ones? They're all the same. All right, all right, sweet. Hit us up on Facebook. Hit us up on Twitter. Hit us up on Instagram. I mean, Berks checks them all. So why not do it on three platforms instead of one? Whatever one's convenient for you. Um, also, big shout out to the NRL Supercoach Tragics uh, cash comps. So if you're looking to do cashies this year, make sure you head over to NRL SC Tragics cash 
on Facebook. It's a Facebook group. Hit up Brod. He's going to take care of you. If you're looking for just general Supercoach info and discussion, hit up the NRL Supercoach Tragics group uh, also on Facebook. So we've got a fair bit to talk about tonight, boys. First cab off the rank, Origin Planning. Yeah. Right. Now, so my question is, with Origin and with Origin Planning, do do you have to do it, right? Con? You can go, mate. Okay. Well, I think you do. At least, you, well, you do. You do have to a little bit because you don't want to get left with, <coughs> like, no players come Origin time, come the buy time. If you're heavily littered with Origin players and you haven't focused on the buys, you you can lose a lot of people and be playing with eight eight players and that can topple you out of the ranks. Whereas if you've planned for this, you can realistically take 13 or 14 into both games, I think. Um, I think last year there was, there was a game where it was more heavily stacked to take into the first game and a lot of people loaded right up. But I think by the time you came around to that second game, there was a lot of injuries... Um, people went down and the plans went out the window and people got left high and dry. So I, I do think planning is crucial. Um, you you don't have to plan from day one. Like Origin is round 13. Um, you have a lot of time to pick and choose your side, you know, if you, if you catch my drift. Like you, you, you will have Origin players in your side. Otherwise, you will get left behind from the start. And then it's a matter of picking which Origin players do you let go of during that period, um, a lot of the blokes get a rest. Um, they played redu- they play reduced minutes, which um, sometimes it's a good ploy to get some players out and bring them back after Origin and the buyers, and they had a little bit of a rest through that period, and they're strong for the run home and a little bit cheaper. Uh, and you haven't copped the hit of points. You've jumped on someone a bit stronger or a bit more solid. So um, I personally do plan for Origin. Uh, I'm probably not this year going to go as heavy as I have at um, the start of the year where I have before. Like in past years, I've I've loaded up from game one with or like I've looked way too deep into Origin, um, and then by the time Origin comes around, I've had these people go up and down, and I lose their money where I should have sold them and moved them along. Do you know what I mean? Like I shouldn't have hung yeah. on to these people, and I've only hung on because of Origin. And it's those sort of things where come round six or seven where I should have moved them on, cashed in, upgraded and done what not else you haven't done and then they just malinger around your side. And I think there was a bloke, I can't remember, from Canberra last year who I hung on to for Origin and he just didn't even play. It was one of them things like and wasted all the, the uh, up, upgrades with his money, you know, and... So, yeah, I think origin planning is a crucial thing, especially if you're in the hunt for overall. Um, head-to-head, not so as important, I don't think. I think you can take your hits because everyone, everyone's going to cop a bit of a hit for origin. But if you're playing overall for the big money, I think origin, origin plan is crucial to your success. What about you, Con? How do you feel about origin planning? I, I think it does play a part. I, I don't know if it's the biggest thing. Um, head to head, I wouldn't care too much about it. As long as I was in a strong position going into it and confident coming out of it. Um, Overall, as long as you, I guess you do have to do a little bit of planning for it. It's hard not to do any at all and try and stay competitive. Like Berg said, it's impossible. Um... Yeah, I've, I gave it some really good thought and I couldn't come up with much against overall for origin planning and you have to do it, like Berg said. It's crucial, but I think head-to-head you can get away not so much. Well, you can. You, you honestly can get away with not planning. Well, you can just bring, yeah, you can just start with a couple, like you will anyway, and just maybe bring in three the week before. And Yeah. Because yeah. a lot of people don't plan for it as well if they're playing head-to-head. Yeah. Well, you you expect. I think that's where you plan for your hits through the origin period, especially if you've started well with head to heads. Then you definitely gain a bit more, mo- like a bit more of a mindset of where you can cop a hit. That's it. If you start four that. and zero or five and zero, yeah, you can definitely cop a hit if you're playing 
head to head glory only. You can cop the hit through Origin because you've already got those wins under the belt. Whereas if if you start off a bit uh, like a yeah, you a lose your first one, three you know, or something, one yeah. and four, then you you might want to look start looking at changing your team a bit <laughs> earlier because you're not doing well. Like, you got to make changes early, but yeah. Again, you got to, again. Sometimes the race isn't at the start as well. You've got to make your money over those yeah, open definitely. rounds. So, it, granted, it's good to walk in with a team, but you don't want to start with so many nuffs on the bench for the sake of having a solid thirteen, seventeen. You're better off having the one nuff if you're going to start with a nuff if you do, rather than littering your team with nuffs if you know what I mean from game one. Like I've heard people with the strategy of three, four nuffs from the start. I think the crazy. only way... That's crazy. Do you consider him enough if you're looking to never fill that position like you would be at the end of the season when you're like, enough for good? Or do you look at him like, well, in the same light as a cheapie that is, is on the horizon, is going to get a run, the Sam Walker of last year, you know what I mean? Like someone who you know is going to come in, Payne Huss in his rookie year, someone who you know is coming into that side eventually. It's just a matter of the when and the where. Have you heard of any this year so far? <laughs> you are asking the wrong norm- person. Normally you would have heard of one by now. Well, there's been pretty much two years with no reserve grade, so it's hard to know what's coming through exactly. Well, that's true too. Like, and that's the other thing I heard, I can't remember. I think it might have been on the Champions podcast with Wilfred and that. that that's why the cheapies are a little bit inflated <coughs> because we don't have Reggie, so they're getting blooded in them round 23, 24, 25 yeah. games. And getting a couple of starts, so they're two hundred, two hundred and twenty thousand yeah. dollars. You know, not what I mean? the bottom and dollar. That's like right. Used that's to. them forty, fifty grand's crucial to the. Oh, yeah, if you they add up a three it. or four, yeah. four or five. Yeah. There, that's um, right. And, yeah. and and that yeah, that was the thing I took from the champions podcast. I was listening because our, our friend Timmy was on there. Oh, uh, Timmy O. Hey, no, Tim. Tim Moody. Oh, Tim, Tim Moody. Moody. Yeah. See out, Timmy. How you doing, buddy? He's last year's champ. I got to hear what he's doing. Yeah, of course. He wrote an article for the telly. Didn't you guys read it yet? No, I didn't fuck the telly. Yeah, well, let's see. I don't pay for it. But Timmy, oh, send us the article. In saying that, Sanks is not as bad as you. We all make out. He's all right. All right. Fair enough. Say good day uh, now. <laughs> nah, don't. <laughs> well, boys, <laughs> speaking of uh, Timmy's and Timmy and people that are on the team here at Supercoach 360, I want to introduce you guys to the first dude, uh, Brad Smith. I mean, you guys obviously know him uh, from around the traps, but our listeners might not know him uh, as well. So, Brad, Brad uh, loves his maths, right? He, um, he's been playing Supercoach for quite a while. I think last year he finished ninth. He did all right. Um, he's always been a commenter on the podcast, and he's always been pretty on the money with what he's talking about. Everyone in the Supercoach community or a bunch of people know him. Um, Brad looks at PPM. Brad looks at numbers and loves breaking down numbers and running his numbers, which I know there's a lot of people out there that do. Uh, so I was talking to Brad the other day, and he's done a couple of write-ups for us on supercoach360.com, um, and we were talking all about points per minute. So let's say good day to Brad. But you yeah. touch on a good point. In fact, you've touched on a couple of good points. David Fafita with his minutes, and then um, so PPM, uh, and then you essential need to be planning what you're doing with your super coach side from the get-go. So, uh, as you know, uh, you've been doing some work for us with supercoach360.com. Uh, you've written up a, a couple of cool write-ups there uh, on PPM and on uh, how to plan out your super coach side. So I was hoping to just delve into uh, a bit of what you do at this point in the preseason uh, to plan out your side, how you go about doing it. So one of the things which you've uh, put in your article about planning is the importance of writing down your dream team sort of before you get started. Absolutely, yeah. I, I think, and, and whether it be new players, um, ones that are just very casual sort of players playing a bit of head-to-head and for fun, um, or those that are seriously chasing the top ones, you all should be writing out what your dream team is and just have a plan, have an objective as to where you want to get to. That might not come off, which mine last year didn't really come off um, from where I started. But basically, I always had a plan to get Turbo in. I always had that plan to get Cleary in, although in the end, I actually went, I was a bit like Tim Moody. I went with DCE, and my plan did change. But that was due to injury and a few other issues with with Cleary. Um, So, yeah, you've, you've got to plan ahead and... You know, I'd be planning in about eight eight weeks 
six to eight weeks in advance about what potential trades I was looking at in six to eight weeks' time from where I am now. So I'd be constantly looking at who who is going to have price increases or decreases in, into the future so I knew who to sell and at what time I could sell them and who I was probably going to be going to. So how do you go about mapping that out? How do you go about, one, finding the information uh, and then, two, actually being able to read it to be able to make your decision? Okay, there's a, there's a couple of good sources out there. I mean, obviously, we've all spoken about Supercoach Stats, which they do a fantastic job, NRL Supercoach Stats. Just jump on the net. You'll find them there. Um, they've got every single stat for every single year for the last billion years, <laughs> just all well, since Supercoach has been going. and uh, But as well, um, if you have Supercoach Gold, right, in a very basic terms, I mean, I'm not going to go – I mean, I have spreadsheets and things like that and mathematical algorithms, but you don't have to go that hard. It really is easy. It's just going to Super Coach Gold, and it'll give you a five-week projection of where a player's price is going to be. It'll it'll give you um, – so you're able to tell then, okay, in, in, say, three weeks' time, this player is going to drop by so much or this player is going to increase by so much. So then you, you've got an idea, okay, that player is going to maybe make 150000 or that player is going to decrease by 100000 You know, if he's going to decrease, obviously it's, it's you know, there's going to be a peak time at which you should be selling. And, of course, you would have heard about break-evens. You know you've got to get your head around when their, their optimal break-even is going to be. Again, Supercoach Gold tells you that stuff. You know, it, it is right there for you on the site, very similar to points per minute it's an easy stat to delve into it's right there you don't even have to have gold for it to start delving into such stats like that um so you, it, it's right there right in front of you you can have a look at them and you can start pulling it apart and trying to figure out for yourselves exactly uh who, who the best value points per minute sort of players might be or who is going to increase in points per minute takes a little bit of research and a little bit of delving Massive thanks to Brad Smith there. Uh, if you liked what he was talking about, there's plenty more to that conversation. Uh, we've got a new YouTube channel. Just search for Supercoach360 on YouTube. If you find the full chat there. Otherwise, he's already written a couple of pieces for us at supercoach 360 Dot com. Thank you very much, Brad. We're going to see uh, a lot more of him this year. Um, one thing he did mention in terms of planning and, uh, was the need to build uh, a dream team. All right. So in, in our conversation, he said one of the most important things for him in sort of planning his super coach season is building the dream team. Uh, so I set the challenge to you guys last week, bring your dream team this week. Did you guys manage to make it? Yep. Yeah? Sure did. Sure did. Did it today. Wow. Ah, oh, okay. There you go. Uh, Threw yourself under the bus. Love that. Well, Burks, let's start with you then. You did it today. It must be fresh in your mind. Who's yeah, your dream well, team? I've literally just should, finished it. Should we go together position by position or is we going to go through each team, rip it apart and I was, go through mine? Well, I was thinking go through Burks' team and then we can easily knock out the doubles. Well, I reckon we'll knock the doubles out early. What do you reckon? All right. Teddy Turbo? No. Turbo Trail. Right. Goal kicking for Trail. I think that See. can close the gap on Teddy and just for a point of difference because everyone's going to have those too. So if Latrell can explode and I've got him and the rest have got Teddy, good for me. I've got Turbo as the starting fullback and then Teddy Puppy or Trell. I've got the fact that Puppy and Trell are both goal kickers as well. Uh, but it's pretty much going to be the two that are in form uh available at that end of the season you know injury suspensions anything can happen so i'm just keeping my options open in a couple of positions yeah right then i have toto yep yep stags yep Aikens. Uh, no stag yep. St no, stags and Aikens haven't made mine gary yep yes now, I've gone with the Broncos fullback. It's either going to be Tessie New or Selwyn Cobbo. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's, I've gone with that guy, whoever that is. Just because Tessie New came out a bit of a wet sail last year and mm. 
with a better side around him. If he's full back, that is. If not, Selwyn Cobbo will be full back and he'll be that guy that I'm talking well, about. Well, I've got one of those, and that's Adam Dewey. If Adam Dewey's playing 5'8, I want him in my centres. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good shout, too, actually. Yeah. Yeah, if you can get him in the centres, I'll, 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 I'll cheers to that. But in saying that, are they going to sack Brooksy and Jackson Hastings didn't come back to play reserve? Well, game? that's. That's a time that's will tell. An argument it's overdue, day. but. What are your centre wings, sorry? Centre wings, I've got Coates, Tupu or Sawali. Uh, and then on the bench, uh, Ramian, uh, Lomax, Mulatalo or AJ. Keeping my options open there. You sure are. Well, I've got Coates and Sawali too. If they can find their feet at the Storm and Sawali can get the wing spot at the Roosters, I'll it's be a, looking towards both of them. Two ceiling clubs that are going to be hot in finals contention and won't be able to take the, um, you know, the foot off the accelerator. Uh, I've got, yeah, that's it, Coates and... Tupu or Sawali, whoever's out on the wings there, um, as my startings. And then I'm just not sure once again with the bench. Who are your sixes? My sixes, Munster Kiri. Munster Kiri. Mine's the real dream, this one's Munster and SJ. I'm yeah. dreaming SJ can find that form that he used to have, and I'm dreaming I can own him again just one more time. All right. I've got Cody Walker and Munster. Yeah. I think if, if, if Souths can click, it'll be off the back of Cody. He still needs a seven, though. Like, he needs someone to start it off, if you know what I mean. He needs someone to have that go. But he's still a good six. All right. Halfback. Cleary. Yeah. And enough for me. Dual well, position enough to, in case I have to play Kiri up or something. like. Well, yeah. I, I, I've got Nafe there, but I had I wrote Chez in just a second ago. Oh, wow. All right. To get me up to a 21-man squad. Fair enough. Yeah, well, Hughes would be my backup if I went... That way, instead of get another gun five eight, but yeah. it'd be either either. Starting back row. Right up. Today uh, for feeder. Yeah, I got for feeder. Yep, Gussie. Yeah, I got Andrew yeah. Strite and. And then who? I got TPJ. Oh, Cam Murray, captain see this year. Um, Straight up, I went Cam Murray as well. Hopefully, he plays for more minutes. Yeah, that's it. I'm hoping eighty minutes on the edge. If he's that, if that's going to be his role as a oh, captain. I won't play edge. He's a middle man. Yeah, well, that's it. He's, brilliant uh, he's lock, fully but... capable. Well, don't get me wrong. In the tough games, you might have to pull him off, but fully capable of playing 80, I think. So, you, you don't know. As 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 a captain, hopefully he has a bit more of a say of when he comes off. If he's still feeling like he's got it in him, then he, he might play 80s. Well, Bennett was pretty well known for not playing many forwards for 80 minutes. Yeah. So, if Demetrio's got a different approach to it, you could easily see Murray step it up to at least 70 every game. Yeah. And that's that's great for his game, especially with the extra sets you get with the the newer rules. And then I've also got B Smith. Yeah, so I've got him up at hooker. Yeah, so I mean, but also like I've got a couple of asterisks where I could interchange any of my hookers into the back row. I've got a few dual position options there because I think that's one of the crucial things is I want informed dual position hooker back row. What else you got in your back row? I've got Curran as well. Sorry, I know the question wasn't directed at yeah, me. Yeah, no, I've got Curran slash Tohu Harris, whoever's hot. Yeah, 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 yeah. At yeah. that time, because Curran's more attacking stats, but Tohu will just get you 70 week in, week out comfortably. Yeah. All right, I'm going to take a stab at all your front rows, Payne Haas and Stefano Udu Wikimano. And IPAP. Oh, you got IPAP in there? Yeah, I've got, cool. I've got TPJ, Haas, and I've got Big Steph. Big Steph who, um, I've... Fully confident in him this year. Yeah. Um, he turned the corner and I'd, he'd be the best the Tigers have if you catch me drift. Um, yeah, definitely. I don't think, like I, like I said to you earlier off off the podcast, like Alex Twa, I'd take nothing away from him, good player. They've just lost Sean Bloor for an extended period. Again. Again, injured. Um, so that, that also adds to him. That means they're coming in with the bloke that's not... Meant to be starting, if you know what I mean. He was meant to be starting all off season, Sean Bloor, until the injury. So yeah, no, he, he just got better week in, week out last year. Now he's another year older, another preseason. He's like I understand he's not going to have, he's not going to score all the tries. He still will score some tries, I think, this year. But last year he scored um, a few tries. I think he got four in a, in a quick succession. So. Might have been three in quick quick succession. So he'll still be gun athlete, I think. Gun player, man. Um, 
and cheaper than both the other two. I've only got TPJ there due, just due to being dual. And if the dog's going to run, and it's best to have him up in the front row where points are a bit yeah, less well, attacking-wise. If I perhaps I mean. not playing on the edge <clears throat> like he did to start the season this year, I probably won't go him. I'll probably have... TPJ or Thompson? Nah. Who are you talking about? Big Steph. Um, Cam McInnes. Sorry, oh, okay, I'll probably have Cam McInnes in me back row. We'll never talk about Cam. No, <laughs> no, you won't. I just I got lost there for a second. I got, I got B Smith, Marnie, Cam McInnes, all interchangeable at hooker or back row, except for Marnie, obviously, if, if he's in form and they got a good run at the end of the season, which I haven't had a chance to check out yet. Uh, but for the front row, I'm looking at uh, Ola Kawatu, uh, TPJ, or possibly the Fish. He's Ola Kawatu. No, Ola Kawatu's back rower. Yeah, is he back straight row. back rower? Yeah. All right, well, sweet. Well, in that case. He's one I you forgot about, to be honest. Karen and Ola Kawatu will make up my back row then, and it'll be a choice of Smith or McInnes at, uh, or Marnie at hooker. And then, obviously, the wizard, right? Well, yeah. I've got Harry and Cook. I just think Cook this year should go up again. I just hope, anyway, for my sake, because I drafted him too. So. I've got Harry and B. Smith, because I think B. Smith and the back rowers will ask. Average cook this year. Right. Yeah, cook hater, eh? He, just hates he loves making bold predictions, though. I'm loving this. He makes a few and he doesn't realise, but I've been <laughs> yeah, going back and taking notes. And <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to eventually. I'll, I'll I'm think just, I'm up. Yeah, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'm going to write an article at the end of the preseason just with all the cons bold selections. Oh, uh, and, you know, bold predictions. So that way we can actually start checking them off the list and seeing what now, comes true. The benefits of writing these down is, is for that, eh? Like, like Brad was, would have been talking about then. Um, is it, it gives you an idea of what way to go, when and how and quickly, hey, like who to bring in, like you just yeah, tick well, them off your list as you go. Well, so that's it. You obviously try and start with as many as possible, yeah. cheapies and middies provided, however that works out. And then, yeah, you just, I suppose, try and just slowly chip away at the list. Yeah. Have a goal of who to get or watch the break-evens and when someone drops to their peak low point, Snap them up. There's no shame in changing your list? I don't think so. Well, obviously injuries and other player performances are going to dictate your dream team come the end. You can't just stick to that plan or shoot yourself in the foot. You've got yourself like a skeleton At least a rough draft, yeah. You know what I mean? Like you know where you want to go. Yeah. Where you think the points are going to flow from. Well, that's it. Ideally, in a perfect world for yourself... All these players are fit and firing come the end of the year, and you've got them all. Is it? Is there anyone you can you can see being like you know how we've had in the, in the past start to finish players? Is there someone like in in the say two hundred two because of the money change? Say say up to two eighty. Is there someone you could see going I'm from not start to finish? Hundred percent on his price, but Joseph Suwali, I think will go He's very close to that. He's just over, but yeah. Oh, thanks for stitching me up there. <laughs> no, he's just over. I'm pretty sure. Um, but yeah, but yeah, he'd be the he'd be the main one, and maybe Isaac Targo from yeah, the Panthers yeah. if he can get that start and center spot and cement is it. Is he is he no shot of playing back row? Or? No, I think we kick our still there for one more year, and Liam Martin earned it right too. I think he's a, I think he's predominantly been a center yeah, for yeah. his juniors and stuff. He just could play in the back row, and that's where they needed him at the time, I guess. Yeah. Now, also, like, just in saying that, will he get plugged in the right centre, or will he go over there on the left with Toto and... No, I think Stephen Crichton will stay he'll left. Stay there. Right. Um, but, yeah, it, anything else in your, in your list that you think would sh- is shocking or anything? Is there anything that shocks you, like... I think we pretty much went over it. Um, no, I... No, well, it's pre- Look, obviously I mean, relying on him getting 80 minutes in the back row. Yeah, that's it, and seeing based on season form. Like, I can understand him being there, especially if he's going to have been in your start, and you're looking at maybe being a season longer if he can pick up that spot and perform. Well, I'm just thinking last year, the game sort of got turned around on on the the second row of centre thing. Like, the centres seem to have way more attack and prowess, way more points on offer for a centre rather than the second rower, if you're catching my drift. Like, now is it, is it more, should we be thinking of stacking our second row with those centres? Like, is, is, has the game changed that much? I mean, look, you, you could at the, um, 
don't know if, if I'd do it at the start. That's just some wild shit. I'm not doing that for anyone out there. Probably don't yeah. listen to me either. But I'm just saying that's where the game's headed. Like it's it's more for the attack and the outside backs, and we do get the odd centre wing that you could probably plug up into the second row. Who who granted his base is probably shit, but on his high weeks he'll definitely outscore those guys. I know what you mean. It's, I think that's a very risky play. It's very, wouldn't, very. Like, wouldn't you'd adopt have to it litter at all. It perfectly. You'd have to litter it perfectly, but it'd, it'd be one of those things, if you could pick and choose that, gee, you'd be, you'd be on. Yeah, definitely. Well, it'd be like having another Dave to feed some weeks. Yeah. Alrighty, boys, let's move on. Uh, we got Ross Mann. So Ross Mann's been Ross a long Gale. time friend of the show, and he's uh, he's put together uh, a big list of his predicted uh, 17s for each club starting the season. So you can start picking people off the list, and he's also been a legend, gone through, put all the injuries and outs, and uh, all his super coach relevant players in a little summary at the bottom of each team. It's organised club by club, so it's a little bit of a go-to guide for me at this point when I'm trying to figure out who to fill that uh, that starting 17. Well, starting 25 with really. Um, so Ross has done uh, a bit for us, and I had a little chat with him the other day. Uh, so I'm just gonna go to that. All right, welcome to the show, Ross Mann. Thank you for joining us in the Coach's Box. How are you going? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Super excited about footy season. Can't wait. Yeah, that's it. Should be good. We've got our first taste of games over the weekend. Starting to see a bit of form, but obviously trials are just around the corner now. Uh, you excited to watch some trials and start figuring out some lineups? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm pretty keen to see... But it's, I mean, obviously, trials is a bit hard because not always all the decent players play, but I guess it gives the young guys a bit of an opportunity. Then it's cheap as an opportunity to prove themselves for those starting spots in the teams. Yeah, that's it. Wonderful. Speaking of starting spots in the teams, you've been doing a bit of work for us over at www.supercoach360.com. Recently, you put up your uh, predict team list. So you, you think you've got uh, your ear to the ground on, on who's going to start, or is this a bit of a... Wishful thinking. I think it's actual thinking. It's probably going to be pretty close. Obviously, trials will be different. It's going to be hard with some of the cheapies and stuff like that. But I think a lot of the positions that I've put there will be pretty close to what they're actually going to be. Um, obviously, got a few players out injured and suspended. But, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. But I think they'll be pretty close to the mark. Awesome. All right, well, you've actually you've done yeah, a fantastic job. You've managed to put uh, like an injuries and outs sort of casualty ward section there for each club. It's all separated out by club with their starting 17 or, or predicted starting 17s. Uh, and then you've even got a little summary of just all the super coach relevant players, which for a bloke like me is just an absolutely wonderful resource. So make sure you head over to supercoach360.com and check that out. Um I just wanted to ask you a few questions, a few of the burning questions which are going around uh, at the start of this 2022 pre-season. Uh, so first one, are you going to start with Turbo? Mm, at the moment, no. At the moment, no. Right, no. fair enough. Too, too expensive? Hoping he's going to drop cash or I, do you think Teddy Puppy's going to make more? I think Teddy and Puppy are going to make more. As I, um, as I just think this year is going to be a different year with the fullbacks. So I don't think Turbo's going to have that big gap uh, between the scoring, between the three, between perhaps Teddy and also Turbo. I don't think Turbo will dominate as much this year. I'm not saying he won't He won't have a good season because he will because he's just gotten, but I just think it'll be it'll be tightened up a bit more this year, especially with Kiri back for the Roosters and perhaps hopefully playing the season out and goal kicking. Um, yeah, I don't see there being that massive gap this year. So at the moment, uh, I don't have two on my team, but I'm pretty sure at some stage you will be in there. All righty. Uh, Nath or Nah? At the moment, no. No, no Nath. Is that just because he's out till, you know, allegedly round four? Or is that the price? Just, just, just the price and the fact that he's coming back from surgery and stuff like that as well. Um, I think for me, he's a wait and see. But again, it could be uh, one to bite you in the backside if you don't start him, though, like Turbo, though. All right. First pick? Uh, first pick uh, was Payne Haas. Yeah, okay. So you go on solid strength up in the front row? Yeah. Okay. Um, must have midi? 
Uh, oh, geez. Tough one. Um, I mean, there's a few options there. I think maybe Xavier Coates might be a good option there. It's a midi. Uh, both firmer if he starts as well. All right. Cool. And, uh, yeah, that's it. The, your cheapy. The cheapy that you got to have. Or the cheapy that maybe people don't know about. Uh, cheapy's probably the um, Targo from the Panthers. Lock him awesome. in your team. Yeah, you reckon? Yeah. Awesome. Well, we've actually had a much longer chat than this where we've gotten into your predicted team list and your Supercoach relevant players. Uh, if you want to find that, just head over to supercoach360.com or hit up our YouTube to search three, Supercoach360 on YouTube. Um, thank you very much for joining us on the show today, Ross. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Not a problem at all. I'm looking forward to jumping back on the podcast again at some stage during the season. Yeah, mate, that's it. We can't wait. We Hopefully, we're going to have you on quite a bit this season. Um, so, yeah, if you enjoy Ross's content, make sure you leave him a comment, drop him a line, follow him on socials, and tune in Supercoach360 because he'll be on here with us as much as we can get him. Thank you for your time. Thanks, mate. And that was Roscoe. Love Roscoe's work. He puts in some big efforts, uh, especially for the new website. All the boys, anyone you've seen tonight, they've got their own content on the website, uh, www.supercoach360.com. Look at that. Look at that. He has no idea what it is. I've been harping on about it for ages. You know, I'm not a good reader. You hide behind that excuse, and we both know you're full of it. Um, speaking of being full of it, apparently Con has some center wings for us. A big shout-out to Ross Mann for all the work he is doing at the website as well. Uh, there is a bunch of members of the team. Someone actually asked in the comments, they said, hey, I think it was um, Timmy Mack said, hey, where's Guy this year? Guy's um, you know, been dealing with some personal stuff that's going on. He's just a bit busy at the moment. Uh, as we all get from time to time. Uh, but, yeah, hopefully he'll be back soon in some capacity. Um, but we've got heaps of people on the team. We've got a bunch of new fresh faces uh, for you to wrap your head uh, and your eyes around. And, I don't know, this just sounds weirder and weirder, doesn't it? Let's move on. Con, <laughs> center wingers, buddy. I do believe that you have a few for us. Oh, I do. Yeah, someone has actually asked us the question. <laughs> Uh, Clay Armitage says, I think I'm, no, I'm going to focus more on fullbacks, uh, front rowers, second rowers, Pelicans for wingers. What do you reckon about that? Hey. Running with Pelicans for wingers, focusing on fullback, second row, and front row instead. The old school super coach method, I'm going to call it. Yeah. I don't mind it. Don't mind it? Would you no. consider it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And Burgo, I mean, you, you know, sort of you were talking about stacking with center wingers and trying to pick up the attacking points. Yep. Yeah. We're... So you're, you're sort of the opposite there on that? Yeah. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Listen to you two. You're just nodding along. This is how people agree to things they don't understand. You guys both agree to something. You are not wrapping your head around what I was saying. That's not all good. Then, uh... No, I know what you're saying. I'd... What's he saying? I'd... You're saying, <laughs> do you start with all cheapies in your centre wing or do you are you going to go with your theory like... You just mentioned about moving them into the back row even because they score so high, you got to have them. Yeah, I just did a little bit of research while watching the rossing. Not many, probably <laughs> not going to happen that way at all unless we get some come in. But, um, yeah, look, I see merit in it. I do see I do see merit in it. Um, but also, now that it is becoming more of a a better point scoring position than it has been, yeah, that's it. Like, there's more points on offer for them. That than... attacking thing you were saying at the start of the show, if it's going that extra man wide, now it's the centres picking up those spots, well, uh, those extra see, attacking points. In, in, this is me theory, just quickly. I don't know if this is going to go anywhere where you want to go, but... Probably not. Instead of getting a Gus, I'll get a Mitch Barnett. Do you know what I mean? So that way I can probably juice up a winger because I think... There's only going to be 10 to 15 points difference 
in between Gus and Mitch Barnett probably by the end of the year at the most. Whereas I think the the centre wings, there's there, there, there's some shit centre wings, and then there's your gun centre wings. Well, that's it. There's the thirties like, and seventies. Like there's a reason Toto seven hundred thousand compared to everyone else there. It's yeah. Because he does so much, so much work. Now, there's a couple of other workers coming through. Whether or not they get spots is like that. Marju, he's a worker from the Titans and stuff like that. But predominantly, they're not much workers in in the back. But I think you you lose players a lot easier in the centre wing if you don't jump on them earlier for for cheaper, if, rather than you can wait for the the second rowers if you know what I mean. They're not gonna fly out to nine hundred thousand like a, a yeah. centre wing will. So you might be best just taking Don't that little Dave hit Fafita, here. Obviously. Yeah, well, look, I'd love to. I'd love to get David Fafita. I'd just, love just quickly while we're on that. Uh, Jared Watson. Uh, what's also, the how are you, brother? With Fifi's or Dfe's, uh rib injury, you guys still keen on starting with him? No, I wait. I'll obviously wait for more news at a later date. But yeah, I'm very keen on seeing he's running the All Stars game. I must admit, I, I can't afford. I can't afford. I know last year I had to jump on at a certain point, but he also had a low. And it was right after I jumped on, he had a bit of a low. Got a couple of games. Dang, I still got some big games in amongst all that, but ended up on the bench by the end of the year, which was a bit of a worry. Um, So, yeah, no, look, I can't jump straight on to Dave Vafita. Don't get me wrong, if I find enough ways to squeeze some money, I'd love to. I'd love to. I'd love to be able to upgrade anyone to David Fafita. <laughs> anyone. Even the best bloke I've got there at the moment. But at this point, can't. It is hard to justify it. All righty. Um, oh, I don't know if I acknowledge, but also there's an extended chat with Ross on an, uh, our new YouTube. Uh, so... I definitely did for Brad, but there's actually a super extended chat with Ross where he breaks down all his super coach relevant players and the ones that he really likes uh, on our YouTube. So make sure you head there, Supercoach 360 on YouTube. Con, have you got some centers for us, mate? Who are you I do. At? Obviously, Toto. I've just gone through and had a look at their base, really. Yeah. So just base and power stats, see what they actually do throughout the game without attacking stats. And... There's three that stood out. One's a goal kicker. That's why his base is so high, but he's in a reliable team, so I counted it. Gaz? Garrick? Yeah. Yeah. It was him. So he averages 56.2, uh, 54 with the goal kicking, if you include the misses as well. Yeah. So throwing the attacking stats that Tommy's going to create, and I think by the end of the year you're going to want to have him, absolutely. Toto averages 57.4 in just base. He's... We all know what he does. Everyone wants him. Everyone will have him. It's, what is he, 20-odd hit-ups, like minimum again? Yeah. And then the other one that surprised me was so high was Jesse Ramian. Average is 53.7. Doesn't see the attacking stats of the other two, obviously not being a winger. But if he can see some good ball without SJ this year, I don't like his chances. But, yeah, he's definitely one to have. I know Guy's a big fan of him. You don't rate... Um... Trindle and Nico Hines over at the Sharks. Service him all right? I Trindle want to see hurt. how they go first. I think Trindle's hurt. After the All-Stars game? I read somewhere, yeah, Trindle's hurt. So, so Mo- Moylan Hines. Keep an eye on that. Stay on the phone. Um, and then I've got a few where they're in good teams and they could just go ballistic. Like Tupo, he only averages 42.7, but on the Roosters' back line, I'll probably be getting him in sooner rather than later. And AJ. We know what AJ did last year. I can't see him replicating it to the same extent. I mean, he's been top try scorer near enough the last two years, man. He's on the end of a sol- you were thinking He has been the last two years. The, yeah. yeah, that's it. The, he doesn't have... No A-Ray. He, not that. He doesn't have a hit up in him, but he doesn't like to get... Do, he doesn't do no top... Well, no he averages race. 29. He ups the game. No, in a year. all yeah. his base. <laughs> like, break oh. tackles. So, tackles. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so he, yeah, he can, without the tries, he's, he's the finisher. Yeah. And we've seen it last year. He'll get you 150 one week and the 26 the next. That's it. When he gets the ball, he right. goes over the line. If they come up against a Melbourne or... If you're playing overall, but it's all about average. So it all averages out and he was up right up there on oh, the third was. or well, he's something. Still, he's, so. he's still up in the top tier of blokes, 
on the um, app. So. It's just such a lethal left, man. Like, it's such a lethal left side there at Souths. I mean, we'll see what happens this year. But Cody played left a little bit with him last year. Cody Mates. played left all, all, year. all year. There you go. Played a little bit of right here and there, which was good to see. Which, you know what, it, it, it done him well. Oh, they, they, and they need him to. Yeah. You can't just have him on one side of the field. Him and Trell, they both have to go both all ways. Halves, all halves should be doing it. Yeah. So, take note. All right, you got any other centres there for no, us? No, I've just got some where you'd keep an eye out if their positions change, like Dewey, Manu, if he can get to fullback or even the six, I'd have a good look at him. What about Manu over the origin uh, time? Yeah, for fullback? definitely. It still does depend. If they lose a couple on the try, I can see him still using Teddy, but Joey Manu, he's he's a good plug 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 and play for his origin. See, and especially if Teddy gets an extra rest after origin put him in finals contention. Well, you, just hope, you just hope that he gets poorly used throughout the year so he's cheap enough for you to, to, to run that gamble. Yeah. Where, where you wouldn't do it if he was expensive and there's a chance that he doesn't make you anything or get as many points. And if they go as explosive as I think they're going to, Keary might be pushing for the six jersey for New South Wales as well. So there could be two positions Joey could fill in over that time. Would they yeah. bring him on as 14 otherwise? I think Lou I would be more the 14. Yeah. I don't think Kiri would be 14. Fair enough. Is that... that no, I mean, and Holmes, if he can get the fullback spot back. I don't know what's happening up there. I don't know if the Hammers well, got it I've or heard, Holmes got it. I've heard it's left side for... Um, so he should be. Left side, That's where he belongs. Left side strong for Val. Yeah. Uh, him, I think, is it Tuolangi and um, Lukey? No, yeah. Yeah. And then you and Aiken was the last one. Oh, and Cobo and Swartley. Yeah, yeah, Depending yeah. on their years. Well, Cobo, Cobo's got the massive raps. Like, massive, massive raps. No, oh, he just reminds me so much of Luttrell. Yeah. The way he plays and the way he runs and everything, it's just Luttrell. So he's lazy? No. <laughs> I'm only joking. Hope not. Does he? Um, alrighty, so next up we've got uh, some Fear Factor players with friend of the show, Timmy O. So Timmy O'Connor has been putting together uh, some of his Fear Factor players. He rates players, giving them a Fear Factor rating just based on different categories that he picks from week to week. It's all up on the website. Uh, I had a chat with Timmy and I, there is an extended version of this chat on YouTube. Uh, he's based in Queensland. He's a mad Broncos fan. So if you're, uh, you know, unfortunately inclined like him, then make sure you hit him up because he loves talking all things footy, super coach and Brisbane Broncos. Uh, so here's our chat with Timmy. All right. Thank you for joining us on Supercoach 360. Tim O'Connor, how are you doing, buddy? Very well, thanks, Juzzy. Thanks for having me on, mate. No, no worries. So you're a valued member of the team. Uh, you've been uh, adding to us uh, quite a bit over the last couple of years. Uh, you jumped on the show a couple of times last year as well. Uh, you're now a part of the Supercoach 360 team through the Supercoach 360 website, www.supercoach360.com, uh, where you've been putting together a weekly column that you call Timio's Fear Factor. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, basically looking at the scariest players in the NRL and Supercoach not to have in your team. So basically, if you don't have them, it's scary as hell to watch. You know, when you're sitting on your couch on the weekend, Turbo just scores a try, gets an assist, and you just want to just sort of put your head under the pillow. That's uh, it's like one of those scary movies things. It's uh, it's just too too hard to not watch, but at the same time you don't want to watch because if he's not in your team, it's no fun. Yeah, fair enough. So you've got a few of those players for us today. Uh, this is taken from volume two of your Fear Factor column. So uh, why don't you start off with uh, who's your first player there? Yeah, okay, so first cab off the rank this week, looking at Nico Hines, uh, who's gone from the Melbourne Storm last year, obviously over to the Sharks this year. Bit of a change uh, for Nico. There's a few unanswered questions. Uh, he actually just played, played in the Indigenous All-Stars game last night. Seemed to play all right without setting the world on fire, so uh, I can imagine enough people saw enough to, to keep him. Me, probably not so much. But there's big question marks with Nico last year. Obviously, he was playing in fullback. Uh, he wasn't playing full games in for some of them. He came off the bench when Paps played. That's uh, Ryan Pappenhausen. 
So there's a, a fair bit of difference between what he did last year and his scoring potential last year versus what may happen this year and his scoring potential being in the halves with uh, Cronulla Sharks. All right. So was you made your uh, your fear factor rating? Are you worried about not owning him? Or are you yeah, just... oh, I think just because of his scoring potential. We, we all saw last season what he did from fullback, uh, assuming that if he's playing in the halves, he's getting his hands on the ball a, a fair bit more and obviously going to get an opportunity to call the shots. So he's just one of those players you can bang out a big hundred, uh, which is obviously the types of players that you want in your super coach team. All righty. So uh, you got any uh, any stats there on Nico from last year or what to expect in the halves from him this year? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, across last season, he played in 22 games for the Storm. Uh, that was at an average of 78 super coach points per game Okay, across his 22 games. Now, like I said before, keep in mind some of those games he came off the bench, some of those he played uh, 80 minutes for. So in 80-minute uh, in games across the season, scored at an average of 1.2. Oh, sorry, try again. Uh, across the season, he scored at an average of 1.2 points per minute. That's in 80-minute games as well as games that he came off the bench. So that's just straight across the season. He scored five big tons throughout the year, some of which he actually plays against in the first three rounds of this season. Okay, cool. So he's got the potential for high scores there. Uh, how's, how's his super coach uh, going to be affected with the club change? Now he's running behind a different forward pack. There's a new coach there. Feels like there's a lot of uncertainty at the Sharks. I mean, that means you know possible potential for big super coach scores and, and big money made, but also. Uh, you know, the fear of the unknown. Um, do you think he's going to go better this year or, or are you going to get on him straight away? No, for me personally, he's not in my round one team. But as I said, he, he can score a big ton. He he got five of them last season. Keep in mind, he, he played 22 games. So that's a pretty good scoring average across the season of football. Um, so to, to go into some of the stats and what I'm looking or what I've looked at for this season... In round one, Nico plays against the Raiders. Uh, he played them twice last year. He scored 138 points in 80 minutes um, and then scored 72 points in 70 minutes. So the fact that he banged out 138 points in an 80-minute game uh, against the Raiders last year sounds pretty good for a, a round one, having a good crack at, at a decent score. All righty, cool. So what's your fear factor rating for Nico? Uh, Nico got him as a three out of five at this point, mostly because of the uncertainty. You just don't know how how often um, he's going to have those big games. He's certainly got it in him, but running all the way from fullback and trying to carve through defence is a little bit different to being much closer to the line of defence and, uh, and playing from the hearts. I will mention also in round two, he plays against Para. Last season only played them once. 39 points in 32 minutes. So, again, a pretty healthy PPM, but obviously didn't play too many minutes. Round three, he's got the Dragons, smashed out a massive 182 points in 69 minutes. So, again, not a full game. That equated to 2.64 points per minute. Which so is just does, astronomical. Absolutely. There's not too many players that score any games, uh, unless they're only playing 10 or 15 minutes, of course. But there's not too many players in the NRL that can score at 2.64 with close to a full game of footy. Yeah, brilliant. So, big thank you to Timmy O for uh, jumping on board, talking to us all about Nico Hines. Like I said, the extended chat is on YouTube. Otherwise, find his Fear, Art Fear Factor articles on the website, supercoach360.com. All right, Bergs. Yes. So, I believe you have a few forward options for us, buddy. I do, but... First, I just want to shout something out before we go into my thing. Um, I found, a f oh, well, actually, it's a page I found for gambling. I'm sorry, gamble responsibly if you're over 18. Don't bet your house on it. But uh, the Sports Nuts, a page on Facebook, uh, they do multis. Like, we all know we're terrible at gambling. Don't listen to our advice when it comes to gambling. Okay, okay. Where's your portion shit? Oh. There you go. You know, I bet big again. enough. To... But no, um, it's a good page. So if you, if, if you do like to have a punt, um, I suggest you go find the Sports Nut on Facebook. I'll let you know next week if they're on Twitter and on um, Instagram. I didn't. I forgot to ask. So I'm a bit useless with that. But um, yeah, go check it out. 
Uh, also, so what do you want to talk about? Forwards. All right, so I've got some forwards, I will be honest. Did not go as in-depth as Con with numbers or anything like that. I do have a bit of an idea, though, on where they were placed average-ish. I just didn't write it down. Um, so the forwards, to start the year, I can, I can honestly see merit in starting with just about any one of these couple of forwards. Um, Especially if you're looking to free up some cash. Uh, Payne Haas, obvious choice, uh, with an average of 68, I think. I do believe he finished the year 68, and he's the only genuine forward with that high of an average. Uh, the other forwards with that high of an average are, are dual position players, I think. Um, but, but having Payne Haas on your side will probably be one of the things you have to have by the end of the year, at least. Uh, not sure if you really need to start with him. Um, granted, if it was 2020, I'd, I'd be saying you've got to start with Payne Haas because I think he averaged 80, mm. 80 odd that year. But last year came crashing back down to earth. 68, still a great average for a big man. Um, but I do feel you could probably start with someone else and work your way to a Payne Haas. Um, could you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. I do. Yeah. I think. Another man who I think will be on your list. Oh, they're all there. <laughs> Big Steph. <laughs> Big Steph, From yeah, the he's... Tigers, I think he'll do a very similar job to paying Haas for a lot less money. Well, I've got Lindsay Collins in that exact same. See, they're the other two genuine. Uh, there's, I've got a couple of actual genuines. I think Welch down at Melbourne, he always does come out of the blocks uh, strong, but he... They're having dramas with big men down there. Uh, there's a couple of unvaxxed. There's a couple of injured. Um, I, and um, what's his name? The, the Bromwich brothers are going to the Dolphins. So I can just see a few extra minutes for Welch if he's got it in. No Dale. Um, no Dale. There's a lot going on. And, and I can see him definitely being a, an easy stepping stone to get to a pain house. Um, and then James Fish-Harris, same. Um, he's he's constantly been the top five front rows for the past couple of years. As long as Juzzy's been playing the game, the fish has been in the top page when you start your front row as bang. Fish is there in the top three to five blokes. Now, they only got fish there because I think Penrith played the first buy round and he will definitely not play Origin. So he's virtually a definite starter till 14, 15, like bar an injury. So you, you won't miss a game. You won't have to use a <coughs> trade unless he gets injured. Will churn out less points than a pain ass, but will chug along nicely. There's a reason he's in the top five front rowers for the yeah, last. Yeah, that's it. He'll give you a solid sixty average with no flair. And they've lost. They've lost a couple as well. So he, he, I can expect things from him. Um, also got TPJ and Luke Thompson and IPAP there. I know that they're the jewel, but if the second rowers are getting more points, I could even. If 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 Huss isn't scoring as good as TPJ and IPAP by the end of the year, I could see myself having Huss on my bench easily rather than having him in my starting. Well, if all three of them you know. are going better than Huss, but not as good as the other five or whatever, gun for second rowers, Huss you, might not even get a run. Well, that's it, you know. And it's it's one of the things you've got to keep an eye on. And it's always good to have these players that you can trade in and out of your your front and second row, um, just with injuries and stuff like that. So that's another thing. Now, I've got Ste uh, Big Steph and, and Lindsay Collins as blokes that you probably <clears throat> might not even need to use as stepping stones. You could just plug and play. Um, Lindsay Collins, was he's playing Origin. Uh, I think he played Australia even, has he? I think so. He he pushed uh, we were hard, uh, Jared we were Hargraves to the bench last year to start the year. If it wasn't for his injury, he was chugging along nicely. Yeah. And like you said, big Steph to finish the year off last year. Um, I've got merit in both of those blokes. Just Well, I've got big Steph after the buy in round 17 last year. In his last eight games, he averaged 65.87. Yeah. So that's too short of Payne Haas season average. Yeah. For, I think he was 100 and... Um, he's a lot... Yeah, 140k but... cheaper or yeah. something. Now, I've also got a couple other guys, if you want to... Pod these other fellas. I think these guys chug along nicely at their clubs <coughs> and all all score well. Like Matt Lodge towards the end of the year last year at the Warriors, he was their go-to guy. Um, 
think he was chugging out eighties and stuff uh, mm. at will by the end there. He was doing really well. He was. He chugged along well once he went to the Warriors. Well, um, you could have AFB too, I think, in that conversation if he gets the minutes as well. Yeah. Uh, and then I've got Josh Papali. Uh, I've started the year a couple of times with Josh, and he tends to come back slow. He doesn't come back chugging out those scores that he's pumping after Origin 3. Um, he's one of them blokes that I would wait... And, and just wait till probably after Origin to see if you're going to pick him up. And also got a wait and watch on um, Mo for the Waker, only because their younger forwards are coming through. I know Mo does a job, but I can just see other blokes starting to pinch minutes. And Well, Mofo's only 22 years old. He's only a kid himself. Yeah, he's no, just been got, there forever. You've got um, Tino. I think he's the captain now, so yeah. you expect him to play more minutes. He'll want more ball. Um, oh, I don't think necessarily. Like I can see Mo still churning out the same minutes. Well, then also well, with Kevin Proctor, well, my other theory was with Kevin Proctor going t- to the bench, um, what's his name, Furmore, he's a worker. He'll want runs. He's not mm. going to dog it out on the edge like uh, Kevin Proctor did. Like he's just out there tackling. Whereas I think you'll find, uh, well, he was. He didn't fucking have any hit ups. <coughs> Um, you'll find Fermor will go in and have runs, which will take away from these other blokes. Well, Peachy's gone out of the middle too, so there's some minutes. Yep, yep, that's true. And then as as Cheapies now, I've only got Andrew for feeded there if there's an injury at the Sharks. I can't see him being part of their initial 17, although he did play well. He, d- he did. He looked it, a lot better than he has for the last two years. He did. I've got him on my list just because he's 200 and something thousand. Very, very cheap. Uh, and I've got Tepo and Maroa because he's a jewel. Well, I think he had 14 hit-ups in the All-Stars game, made 20-odd tackles. Yeah. So if he can do that every week and break a couple with his cross-field Oh, he's got jogs. an offload and everything. Like so, yeah, he, he could make you a little bit of coin. Well, even if he's just a stepping stone up. Yeah. Or you don't have to play him. He's not a bloke you have to play, but he could definitely chug along. He's only got to score a try one week and then two weeks later get rid of him. You know, he's, <laughs> he's going to make that money. But, um, yeah, that's basically it I got for the front row. Like, I didn't go as in-depth as you did. I've got it right up on the on the website. Well, front rows virtually speak for themselves. What they average is pretty much what they average. They don't get all that yeah. many well, attacking they're not, stats. They're not going to get to the 900,000s that some of these other guys can get. Like, realistically, now, we've seen million-dollar players. 1.2, and a half. You know, and so it's not, it's not a stretch to say that we'll see another million-dollar player. No, definitely not. I think we will see... More than three this year. Really? So, but we'll, we will not see a front rower make a million? No, I don't think so. I don't think so either. Not unless Dave from Heater moves to the front row. <clears throat> Tommy? Plays like one sometimes. What do you got there for us, uh, Juzzy? Uh, okay, moving on. Uh, team selection tips. So, Glenn Fisher from the Supercoach Tragics. He does some wonderful work. He runs uh, the group and the page over there. They've just started a <laughs> podcast as well. So, get around that. You can find it, uh, I believe it's on YouTube, it's on Spotify, Apple, everywhere you find your podcasts. Um, I think they usually release on a Wednesday. Anyway, he's uh, he's been doing a bunch of write ups uh, as part of Tragics and he's. Uh, Put him up on supercoach360.com as well. Uh, so he's got a team selection tips, and it's his sort of uh, 11 parameters uh, for picking a team. The full conversation is on YouTube, but there's a little taste of it here. So, All right, Glenn Fisher of the Supercoach Tragics. Thank you very much for joining us on Supercoach360. Hey, thanks, Justin, for having me, mate. How are you? Yeah, mate, I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm excited. Footy's back. Trials are around the corner. Uh, we've just launched the Supercoach360 website. So, yeah, I'm very, very excited, to be honest. Uh, speaking of the website, you've uh, you put in a, a lot of hard work, let's be honest, um, doing a bunch of really, really informative write-ups, which are all on uh, www.supercoach360.com. Um of course, you're part of the NRL Supercoach Tragics on Facebook, uh, and you're sort of the ringleader around there. You're definitely one of the most active members in the group, always posting um, all sorts of bits of Supercoach information. Uh, so tell us a little bit about uh, your Supercoach. How long have you been playing? Uh, so I started playing in 2015, and, um, yeah, I've had a bit of success. I've been top 100 once, and I've finished five times top 1,000. 
one of those times I was top 20 for a good part of the season and then blew it at the end. Um, yeah, I run Tragic Page with Brod, Dan and, and the other boys. It's something we enjoy doing. We're all passionate super coach fanatics. So. Tragics even, you might say. Yeah, somewhat. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so you've been doing uh, a bunch of different write-ups over on supercoach360.com. Um, the one which I actually want to talk to you about today is uh, your new Glenn's Guide, the tips to selection that you've put out there. So when I read through this and I had a little bit of a look at it, I didn't realise how many boxes one of uh, a player has to tick to get into your team. It's actually incredible. You have 11 different decks that you will sort of mark off on each potential player coming into your side. And you'll weigh up. When you're weighing up players against each other, it's on not only their averages, their prices, but also these 11 factors. This just sort of blew me away. So how did you come up with these? Oh, I don't know. I mean, as I've been playing for lots of years, as I said, so... Every kind of year I learn something different, I guess, and I sort of learn what's worked, what hasn't worked, and, um, you know, you just sort of pick that stuff up. And I, I probably go in a little bit in-depth more than some people. I'm a little bit fanatical, I guess, but I really enjoy that aspect of it. I really love the strategy side of Supercoach. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I mean, I'll admit you play in a very different way to the way I do. I'm not much of a stats and number crunching sort of guy. I wouldn't even know what stats to look at half of the time. Uh, I'm starting to learn more the more I read on Supercoach 360. Um, yeah, I'm actually starting to really begin to understand how people actually go about working out and pinpointing players using all those numbers because that's one thing I've struggled with in the past. Um, but then these sort of uh, 11 checks that you've got – uh, it is something which, yeah, I've never really even factored into my super coach side. So let's start at the top, minutes. I mean, it, obviously, it sounds like a pretty straightforward one, but I think the key takeaway there is 80 minutes for backs um, and hookers and spine, pretty much the only people that should be playing less than 80 are forwards and ideally 60, 65 plus. Yeah, that's right. You, you really want, I mean... The more minutes the players on the field, the more opportunities they have to score. You know what I mean? When they're sitting on a bench, they're not getting attack stats, tackles or, or base. So, you know, I, when I look at forwards, I try and look at the rotation in sides and try and work out what minutes that player is going to get. Because, as I said, the more minutes on the field, the more opportunities they get. Awesome, Glenn. I think you've given us uh, a hell of a lot to think about. Uh like I said, if you want to find Glenn, uh, you can always find him on the NRL Supercoach Tragics group, uh, NRL Supercoach Tragics on Facebook. Uh, he also runs the NRL Supercoach Tragics podcast, which you'll be able to find in the group and on the page, otherwise it's on Spotify uh, and everywhere else as well. Uh, plus, he does some writing for us over at supercoach360.com, www.supercoach360.com. There's a bunch of awesome articles, and you can get, uh, yeah, a bit of a glance inside Glenn's mind, which is always interesting, um, and definitely gives you a lot of food for thought when it comes to Supercoach. So thank you very much for joining us on the show, Glenn. Yeah, thank you, mate, for having me, and, and I hope that my articles explain better than I can um, with my voice. <laughs> oh, what are you talking about? You've done a great job, mate. Thank you very much. No worries. Cheers, mate. All right, thank you, Glenn Fisher, and all the wonderful people at Supercoach Tragics as well. You're all doing fantastic work. Keep it up. Uh, moving on, though, um, we've got some unanswered questions from the last couple of weeks. Sorry, guys. Uh, you know, pre-season has taken a little bit of time for us to, you know, knock the rust off as, as we start to get back to match fitness and ready for game day. Um, but we are going back and going over them. So the first one we've got is from Jaden Chapman. He said, uh, who's the team that you're most looking forward to watching this year and why? Mine's, I've got two, uh, Broncos and the Bulldogs. Yep. Uh, yeah, just the effect A Ray can have on those young kids up there. If he can steer around like I think he can, I think they'll be in for a big year. And the Bulldogs, because if their forward pack can click and get a roll on, they're going to be really competitive this year and there could be some points in them. I too have the Dogs and the Roosters. I've got the Roosters. I just, after their last year, like they got to the finals, yes, it wasn't pretty how they got there or anything like that. But a full compliment for the Roosters, and and I just see them 
going on a tear, you know. Like, remember how Melbourne went on the tear last year? I can see the same tear from the Roosters. Yeah, I think they're going to be very good too. I just don't like them, so I don't want to see it. No, I don't like them either. I hope they bow out in the finals. But <laughs> I can just see that I, they just keep getting better and better. They don't seem to ever drop off, you know. And then next year they get better again, and it's like, well, what do you do? So, yeah, I just, I just see them going well. It'd be good to own a couple. Also, interested in South to see how they do handle the loss of Adam Reynolds. See if they start going backwards and the Wayne Bennett factor obviously too gone. So, interesting to see where they're sitting at the end of the year. Yep, yeah, awesome. Uh, yeah, for me, it's uh, the Panthers. Well, that's why I just didn't bother because I knew he's got Panthers. Yeah, well, I mean, look, I mean, one, they're my team, so I'm always looking forward to watching them. Um, <clears throat> but two, uh, look, they, they did really well last year. They were thrilling to watch. They put on a lot of points. Um but they have lost some. They have lost a few players. So does the system work? And are they going to be able to sort of pick up where they left off? Uh, and then the Roosters as well, because yeah, full strength Roosters. They were lethal a couple of years ago. Are Panthers going to be able to do it with a side like the Roosters? I mean, this, you've already got to tackle the Storm, but Roosters sort of give them a run for their money. I mean, Panthers the are right up there too. Giving people run for their money without their stars. So. A full compliment. You gotta, you gotta watch him. Yep. Alrighty. Uh, Matty Drew he wants to know if there's any big Bergs and specials this year. Look, I do have one or two. Um, if I was you, Matty, I would definitely jump on Big Steph. He's, I think he's a definite. And I think, I think. This is just, I'd wait, watch and see with this one personally, but I think that Blake Taff will play seven after Trell comes back. He'll just go from full back to seven and they'll give Ilias a bit of time to get to know first grade a bit better before they throw him in the deep end. What if he has two absolute blinders at the end of the match? Who? Ilias. Oh, good on him. He stays there, but I don't see it happening, so... I, 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 I can't jump on. I can't jump on either of them with any faith. Like, I just don't know what's going to happen there. And if anyone's taught me anything, it's the Warriors. Rowdy, your side. The Warriors have fucked me every year. I've played Supercoach, I think. They bring in harms every year. They play them for two, three weeks and scrap them before they get a decent price rise. It's like, well, fuck. Like, and then you bring in the next one because you think, oh, he's got to get the go. Nah, didn't get the go. And it's like, well, what do you do? Like, it's one of them things now I'm sort of wary of that. If you're not, if I haven't seen somewhere where the coach has come out and said he's playing that position, that's his to lose sort of thing, then I'm not. I'm sold. sure he will by the end of the preseason. Not so. I hope he does. That will sell me. <laughs> but if he doesn't, then I'm not sold. Fair enough. Alrighty, uh, Adam Sargent, he says he's thinking Paps and Ponga at fullback because he thinks that Ponga could be like Teddy when he was at the Tigers. Is it a word to the wise or is it a stay away? I don't mind it. I wouldn't be banking my house on it personally. What's your draw like early? And he's a KP fanboy and he's saying oh, look, I, 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 I like, I, don't, I see merit in it. Like, you're going against everyone else, you know, and if KP... We all know he's got he got his big boy's pants. I think two years ago now got his first one sixty, and then last year I think he got a couple of big scores. Like it wasn't just one in the year. He got a couple of decent scores. So we know he's got it in him. His problem is he's a bit lazy. Um, he tends to if they if you just go to shit, he goes and clocks off and kicks a rock in the corner. So that's your drama with KP. His enthusiasm's not there. If he had the enthusiasm of a Teddy or someone like that, fuck, he'd, he'd be a must-have. All righty. Uh, Jay Statsberg from NRL Supercoach War Room uh, wants to know if uh, no To'o or Garrick, um, any Smokies you've got for your centre wing <clears throat> and who's your centre wings that you're going after to start the season? Um, ones I think will start strong are Coates. Yep. And whoever gets the Roosters, right wing spot. Yeah, so either Suwali or... Sauce, uh, not Sauce. 
Um, I don't know. Nguama. Like, yeah, Kevin. Kevin Nguama. Or there's even another name I seen the other day in the mix as well. Is there a chance um, they're going to rotate through that spot throughout the year? Hopefully not. Hopefully Suwali's taste last year, another preseason. I reckon he's bulked up a fair bit. Yeah, Hopefully yeah, he does look big. I've seen him. He's good to go and stuff. can handle the full season. All right, I've sweet. got a sneaky for you. I'm on either whoever gets the fullback role at Brisbane, if it's either Tessie New or Cobo. Yeah. Um, I, I, hopefully it's Cobo just for the price, but <laughs> um, I just see them going on a bit of, like, I can't see them setting the world on fire making a grand final, but I see them going a lot better than they have the last three years in particular, um, just with the guidance. And a couple of them younger blokes turned the corner last year if you know what i mean like how used it in newcastle like they'd cop their hard bash in the year before they got broken in if you know what i mean like they became men so to speak they'd been trampled over the year before and they came to grade last year and it showed they didn't get the wooden spoon you know they got better as a team and this year i just see them getting a bit better and if we've seen anything with the south's attack they they like to use the fullback and Adam Reynolds was a massive key to a South's attack, and he's now at Brisbane, and they've got some big units up there to use, and I see the fullback up there, most beneficiary, him and Stags, to be honest. All righty. Um, Scott Smith wants to know your five definite must-starts. So for me, probably Teddy, Paps, uh, Grant, or Cleary. And then I need a couple of forwards, unless you guys disagree with any of my selections so far. Well, I'm overlooking um, Harry at the moment. Yeah. Just because of money. I've got Cook, but subject to change to Marshall King yet. Yep. Again, I don't know. I just, I need money. I can't, I can't have anyone good. The way I see it is if you, you, you can either have them two good fullbacks like, that are half decent. But I, I, that's it. What are your top five? Are you going that way? Yeah, well, I've got to have Teddy. And Teddy Pappenhausen. There you go. So who um, are your top three? Well, I've got to have Teddy. I don't so much have to have Pabs. Who you go instead of Pabs, though? <clears throat> well, I'd love to say Trell if he wasn't suspended. Yeah, but you're not holding him for three games, are you? Two. Oh, it's you're considering it? I mean, I would consider it two, to be honest. It's realm's possibility. Yeah, goal kicking. I just, I, just, yeah, I just can't trust Pabs anymore. Yeah, after the confidence thing after last mm. year. Yeah. Fair call. Mm. Fair call. And then I'll probably have to start with... <clears throat> you definitely have to start with one decent front row. No, it doesn't have to be certified gun like a Haas. Well, I reckon Udo is a definite starter for me in yeah. the front row. Yeah, well, I'm looking at him or if Lindsay Collins... Gets his start and roll straight back. I'll jump on him on the. And I reckon Warriors Edge is my other starting second rower. Whether Aiken. that's current, well, Aiken, well, Aiken's or Tohu. Well, I mean, Tohu's, Tohu's not back. Half so. year. Yeah, Aiken, yeah, Aiken should already have the foot in front just with his jewel. Like you can whack him down in your in your centre wings and know you're getting. But that's it. I'll probably have him in my centres. No, you're getting seven. He, he's points, not my. De- he's not my definite. I think Curran, who's proven himself last year, probably has a better chance of securing that starting spot and holding it down. He's probably my my choice. I reckon. Mine's Olakawa too. Oh, I think yes. another year, another okay. preseason. I think he's going to have. Yeah, he hasn't been playing rugby league for I think maybe three, four years. That's it. He's turned up one day. We I think can't remember who it was, and they're like, "You want to try?" He's like, "Yeah," and he started. So I think big things coming from Molokawa too. Yeah, yeah, and I keep forgetting about him too, but yeah, he's definitely a smoky to be throwing up there. All right, um, Steve Clifford wants to know: Can you put this on YouTube? Good news, Steve. I've been talking about it all night. We did. We put it on YouTube. Uh, you can it's get cool, the audio. Because you, Steve. It is. <laughs> you can get the audio podcast on there. You can get uh, the Facebook stream on there. Otherwise, we've got a bunch of things cut up into handy little segments. Uh, to make it easier for you to find whatever it is that you're looking for. Uh, so check out the YouTube, Supercoach 360. Sam Picard wants to know uh, Sam Walker, SJ, Ilias, and Sexton in his halves. What do you reckon? Yuck. For me. Yeah. Oh, fucking get rid of Sexton. I think, you, I think ballsy as personally. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't go near it, but you do you. SJ I like. Really? 
I want to see first. I do. Yeah, I'm, I do. I'm waiting to look. And uh, Glenn makes a good point in the extended uh, chat that we had um, about considering a player's past injury history. It's what's steering him away from SJ and Kiri. Um, SJ can pull out of a game at the last minute. Like, Kiri doesn't <clears> do that. <throat> Kiri's going onto the field. The issue is Kiri gets into the wrong tangle and he might not finish that game, but he's definitely starting it. SJ, as you guys know, because you've been burned by him in the past. Several times. Yeah, exactly. Still it's, looking at him. It's an hour before game day. So all that says to me, Berks, is you don't learn your lessons. It's not that. He, he He's home. He's at his spiritual home team. If we see a bit of form and fitness out of him in the first couple of rounds, then all right. But, yeah, I'm, it's, a, it's a watch and act for me. Oh, it is for me too at the moment. But, I, like I said, I'd say Merritt and he's having an day. I'd just say, yeah. All right, Sexton? Nah, not a fan. Nah, you wouldn't go near it. Uh, Ilias? Nah. I South, if he locks down I'd the wait, house. I'd wait till I heard something. I think he's got it. I like it. Yeah, see, I, I personally want to see the job security first. Um, and S. Walker, Sam, old Sammy. Nah, I can't tell you to go there either. See, I think in an explosive side, he showed his potential last year, and I think he can combine with Kiri. They've had a preseason under their belt training together, and I think he was obviously getting some halves coaching from Kiri throughout last year while Kiri was on the sideline. Like, he was still part of the club. So if he can keep the goal-kicking spot and doesn't lose it to Momorowski, I can see merit in it, but if he's not kicking goals, I wouldn't touch him. Yeah? All right, cool. Fair enough. Uh, Brad Huxley says Manu as a smoky, if he, especially if he's given a license to roam like Teddy. Well, he had it. He had that for the last fucking six games of the year or something last year. Well, that's it. So he's saying if Robbo keeps that up, well, is Joey Manu a smoky this year? Yeah, well, the blueprint was set by Turbo and Origin, really, playing yeah, both was, sides yeah. of the field like that. So if you've got a player like Joey Manu who can do it, I can't see why you'd stop him. Well, it's it a waste, makes you more it? dangerous. It's a waste to not... What, just camp him out there? We talk about it. F- fuck, we've been talking about it way before Supercoach even. How wasted is that, dude? Yeah. Especially, well, especially if they're, if they're constantly there. going left because that's their stronger side too. I mean, if they can catch the uh, the defence off guard and he can manage to sneak across there with Teddy, all of a sudden you've got two extra men and, and formidable men. You know, you're not just putting a oh, couple of newbies, a couple of rookies out fucking there. They're both ask, seasoned professionals. Ask Rich Joe, mate. Joey Manu is a fucking well, king. Well, he did. I think he brought it up episode one. He was asking if it was time to get on Manu. And you know what, Richo? It might finally, it might finally be the time. Fucking Joey's here. Uh, Ross Mann uh, wants to know, is Billy Smith in for a big year this year? Look, he is, he, he, he's the other one at the Roosters. He should, by rights, get a spot. He has been touted for, for is three it, years. Is he due something. back round one? I think he is. I think he is. Oh, but I think he's been passed over. Do you think? Yeah. Two Bo Suali wingers, and then Manu Momorowski in the centres for me. I can see Momorowski just not doing anything. He's a dad. No, he's not. He's okay. They, they signed him for a reason. He does his job well. He, does, he, he, okay, he doesn't he need does, to be glory, okay, man. But I'll be honest. I just, I don't know. I don't like Mama Rossi there. <laughs> I can see Billy Smith supposedly like. And then you got Kieran too. Con, you played got really there? well there last year. You got your phone. Yeah. Do you want to call Uncle Nick and just tell him <laughs> that Bergs doesn't like? <laughs> yeah. I'll send him an email later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe a text or something yeah. like that. Send Hit him up on Snapchat or, or something. Up if he wants. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, Brad Smith wants to know, uh, Mitch Rain apparently has signed at the Eels. Uh, do you think this could uh, hurt Reed Marnie? Especially on the way out, the way to the dogs in the, uh, 2023. Um, could he see reduced minutes or a two-hooker strategy going on over there? No, I think if Parramatta want to be competitive, they play Reed for 80. If they want to be serious, yeah, it's trying to win a comp. Um, I think it's just more precautionary because Reed had a few issues last year. I think one was a bad head knock. So, yep. so they just want some backup, yeah, a backup specialist, just quality depth. Yeah. All right. Cool. Like I know BA can be a sook. He's a renowned bit of a sook, like blows up and shit like that. But you're right. To win a competition, you have to, regardless of like same shit with B Smith down in Melbourne. Yeah. You got to put him on your park if you want to. If you want to win, they're yeah. there. They're there on their money for a reason. Like, granted, they're getting up upgrades or whatever, whatever they're going to do. But there's a reason why. But they're there's a reason like they're, they're they're the bloke in your seventeen to begin with. And sure, you low bottom, your fault. <laughs> like, 
you know? That's it. Well, it's a business. It, it if is. it goes the other way, they're happy to do it, so. It's one of them things. If someone comes and says, do you hear me? And take half what you're worth. You say, fuck off. <laughs> Personally, wouldn't you? Absolutely. Yes. Um, so who else we got there, Juzzy? What's the next question? The next question, that is all for the unanswered questions. So we're up to date. So just the uh, questions for this week. Uh, Michael Carroll, thoughts on Hetherington playing 80 on an edge? I mean, look, if he can stay there for more than five games, I'll be cheering. Hey, it would be a good get if he can pull his head in a little bit. Yeah, look, that's Fatale it. Fatal Mariners definitely out. Supposedly there's a thing on the physio. He does a Patreon or something now. You can pay money to find out what he's saying. And um, he's saying that he's out for a bit. Yeah. Or doesn't look like coming back at all. Something like that. I read somewhere. Mm. So, Heverington this weekend at the trials is playing second row. So, so here we go. it would be one of them things. If he can lock that down, I'm not buying him because he's a liability. But that definitely opens up options for a front rower. Because that means we're playing front rower. All right, Brian Ings wants to know, where will the Sharks end up this year and do they have any Supercoach-relevant players? Well, to answer the Supercoach-relevant players question, mate, head to Supercoach360, find Ross Mann's article. He lays it all out in there. Otherwise, look for the extended chat on Facebook where we go through and break it down. Sorry, on YouTube at the moment, yes. Um, Where will the Sharks end up this year, boys? Top eight or no? No. No. Yeah, for me as well. Actually, yes. Just out. Yes. Just out. Yeah, I, I mean, I think I think they could be in the contest, but I don't think they're going to be in the game, if you know what I mean. Uh, Steve Clifford. Uh, might be too late, but a question for Con, because he'd know most about him being a Knights fan. What do you reckon about Josh King now? He's in the Storm system. Is he relevant? Oh, I like him as an NRL player. I like his enthusiasm, and I think he plays the game tough. Um, it's just a mention, you know, it's just a matter of how many minutes and how he fits into the rotation down there until we know that. That's it. Storm players can be uh, a little bit up and down, can't they? I mean, they, they're not necessarily guaranteed their spot and then they've got to do their job for the team. And then, of course, you've you've always got depth at the Storm. Well, well, none might... of, sorry, there you, you, go. you go. I was going to say, none of their start and forward pack really have set High benchmarks in super coach scores for a few years now since Jesse Bromwich lost his gun status. So, I mean, the number nine you... takes everything, doesn't it? Yeah, I and mean... they're back. So, yeah, Fleece yeah. Fusi had that one good year with Cronk. But... All right, uh, Danny Sackle says now that Jared Hayne has been released on bail, a para still shit. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Stephen Richard says... So if is Jared. Yeah, he's still a shit today too. <laughs> yeah, good, good. <laughs> Stephen Richard says, if Bergs takes Saxy to the prom, is he expected to put out? Uh, Bergs or Saxy? Because I imagine both B- will have both, a problem. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'm easy. Whatever way can yeah, we can yeah. Well, I think that's what he's been playing. We can meet in the middle. Brad Smith, I think he's talking about the fact that Jared Hayne has been released as biggest flop of the year, uh, and he's also asking, will Danny Sackle wear a see-through dress? This I sounds like so. it's going to be quite a prom. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on OnlyFans, boys. From there, yeah. find your audience. You'll be all right. Um, Join me. Barry McCormick said, uh, for the overall vibe of the year, how important is the team name? Keeping in mind, I intend to win. Bazza. It is very important, Baz. You don't want to go out there with... Uh Baz's, Baz's fairies or something. <laughs> <laughs> let's face it, next to you when we're talking about Baz's butterflies, <laughs> people think we're not talking about Supercoach. So you want to have a mean name, a cool name. Baz's Baz 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 Brothers. Yeah, it's it. Yeah. Uh, Mitch DeLeggy wants to know, uh, is Snoop Dogg making a guest appearance tonight with the boys, fresh from the halftime show, of he course? He just left before we started. Oh, yeah, Mitch, that's I it. Don't you worry. here, Mitch. <laughs> So, so, so Bergs is going to reach out to Snoop Dogg and see if he wants to sponsor the pod because, you know, Bergs thinks we might fit his demographic. We so, definitely do. Let's see how, I mean, allegedly, let's see Imagine how we go. he just started <laughs> sending the shit. I mean, yeah, that'd be great. Uh, anyway, Russell Terry Tough Kane says, should I be stoked or worried? My team's stacked. Obviously, it'll change with TLT, but is anyone else running out Teddy Pap Stags, Cleary Fifi Curran, TPJ Haas, AFB, and then just a heap of mids and cheapies. I mean, yeah, that pretty much looks like what my draft's looking like, I'll be honest. 
Uh, nothing like that. Sounds good. Sounds really good if you can find yeah. the find the right mids and cheapies to fiddle, fiddle yeah, in between. Well, and you say you stress the right mids, and that's where I'm curious to know exactly what I'm mids and cheapies. Mids at the moment. I mean, well, look, I mean, if you're starting with those guys, yeah. Yeah, uh, Matty Mehag yeah. says thoughts on a pod like Nakora. Personally, for me, a no go. Which Nakora? Britain Nakora, I would imagine. Sharks back oh, row. Yeah, I was thinking of the brothers. Nikarima. Yeah, sorry. Get on the microphone, Bex. Sorry. No one heard that, <laughs> did they? So. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, Britain Nakora. Look, I like him, but again, you don't know what the halfback situation there is. Um, <clears throat> to beat up in the air. SJ used to feed him decent ball. Uh, and he would run good lines well, with SJ. Assume, he had a good combo there, but I don't know. I'd need to see the combo. You'd assume the, they're all pretty young, like the Nakora and Trindle and I think there's another one that Connor kind of Tracy and Takio all come through grade, I think. They're all about the same age. So you'd have to assume they have a bit of a relationship. When he's on the park, Trindle. Mind you, Hines isn't much older, so he's hoping Hines... Hines, I don't think, played Cronulla, though. No, but what I'm saying is hopefully he can fit into that quite well and get into that sort of dynamic with the boys. Well, that's the other worry. Like, only one one person has left Melbourne and maintained an average, not going on to be better. Widdit. Yeah, Widdit was the only one who went on to do... Okay, no one's really left there and gone, fucking, I've come from Melbourne, bro, look at my scores. And let's be honest, he was storm fullback at, at Melbourne. You know, he was high, yeah, high biggest, scoring player on the field I when think, he was. I think you find his biggest scores were while he played in the halves. So. No, opposite, bro. His no. biggest scores were a fullback, yeah. Were they? He didn't do great in the halves. Oh, well, fuck it then. I'm not arguing on that. Yeah, yeah, sweet. I mean, don't, you win? don't get me wrong. Go look it up, but I'm pretty sure I'm right because I've been talking to a bunch of people who crunch Supercoach all day and night, um, and yeah, I reckon they're cheap. pretty on the money. Jazzy's now got a team of people. To <laughs> you gave them to me. That's the best part. What are you talking about? Um, Chris Irwin says, why is the whole process still pick higher-priced uh, second rowers and not centre wings? Last season, if you stacked centre wings, you would have been way better off. Add in the penalty inside the 40, and there will be less hit-ups for forwards and more attack chances fully agree fully agree with that I, I've stated that earlier I think that I'll probably look at starting with the second tier of second row so I can invest more money into my backs <clears throat> and not have to start as cheaply um, just because those ones that are definitely going to get the the good wing spots like the, the busy wingers you know and the busy centers they're going to make big points this year yeah, and big money too. Yeah, and if you can get on and off at the right time, you'll be able to be- build your team very quickly, especially with these boosts. Well, my my thing about it is, they <clears throat> say so out of the top ten centers and second rowers, it was five five. Dewey was encountered in those. Se- Dewey was counted in those centers too, but so I just think because the second row is so much safer and it's volatile in the center wing, they could drop two hundred odd k. In a couple of weeks, if, the they, d- if they don't get a try or anything, and you can snap them up cheaper than what you're ever going to get a Tohu Harris, Cam Murray, Dave Fafita, and stuff like that. But if it goes the opposite way, and that's the week, if you you had the opportunity, that's it. if you to miss get a on, run, it's a chi- it's and then the next two three you weeks they go up that two hundred grand, you knock you, you you're ripping your team apart to get to them. And yeah, well that's Matty like, Drew's with you. He said risky strategy, but you know well, I, I was one you, of them ones last year that paid. Seven hundred thousand for David for feeder, when I could have got him for five hundred. Yeah, I did that for IPAP when I could have paid four four fifty. Like there's well, yeah, it's just one of them things. Like I missed the boat there. I missed the boat a couple of. So they were two forwards. I didn't even have Mitch Barnett. Yeah, they were two forwards. Well, Garrick was one that a lot of people had to pay well overs for in the end. I mean yeah. centers. Oh man, <laughs> okay. You want to talk centers? I didn't get on. I didn't get on Garrick. Um, who, who were the? I didn't. I paid I didn't, top. I paid top dollar for Beam was. I think round three or something when Maddo went down. Injured, yeah. And uh, well, he, he did well until he got injured, so I can't complain too and, much I mean, about that. Yeah, that's it. That I mean, that was a pretty epic injury too. So can't really do much there. I mean, who, who were the biggest scoring centre wings last year? Because I guarantee I didn't have Toto. nine out of ten of them. Yeah, I had Toto from the start. Dewey. Yeah, I don't think I got on Dewey. But he too wasn't late. a centre wing. He wasn't a centre wing. Yeah, no, nah, didn't have gags. Never touched uh, him. Uh, AJ. AJ. 
not until late in the season if I did get on him. Yeah, that um, was top five. So. There you go. Right, like that's it. That's where I've always done it. So I'm going. I'm trying to put mids in my second row personally, a gun in each. I'm. Um, I'm going to have a few mids in my centers uh, and just try and spread the mids and cheapies sort of evenly between the two. But center wings is usually where I'm fairly weak, so I want to be conscious of that and make sure I'm pulling points out of the wings each week, because otherwise I'm in trouble. So another thing with the center wing way down start there. I think you can look through the draw, find a good attacking team. He favours one side, might have a mid-range winger on there. He could have a red-hot first month like Beemos did this year. You can trade him out to just about anyone in six weeks. Yeah. Yeah, there's a couple that do it. There's a couple that do it every year. There's a couple that have done it in the in the past that are cheap. Well, Ado Carr, he can do it. I don't know if he will this year, but any, I think any coach could do that in his stead. I think any backs from the dogs are a wait and see. Um, yeah. I'd go jump on a forward like a TPJ or a um, Thompson. Luke Thompson, but I won't even, I, I'm about. even got one eye on Paul Vaughan. He's come back, he's fucked up, he knows it's his last chance, he's on a shit all contract, he's going to be out to prove a thing or two. And I think he's still got it in him to do it. Well, he's been there in the past, like we've both been owners of yeah, Paul Vaughan. Definitely. Um, reason for Right it, back to his time in Canberra. Yeah. All right, uh, Jaden Chapman, who wins the comp and why? Roosters, because they're just two star started, I think. Yeah, I think, I it. think mm, it'll be Melbourne Roosters grand final. Yeah, you reckon? Yeah. Panthers yeah, just aren't in it? Oh, no. Can't go back to back? Sorry, Penrith, but big ask. It's just a big ask. It is. He's lost a lot. and Well, it's been a massive two years, too, and they're young kids, so they had to build up to the first grand final defeat, and then they got the elation of the second one, so... Then they break the trophy. To go three in a row is massive. Yeah. I reckon they can do it. Uh, and otherwise, yeah, I think the Roosters, I think fresh, full of experience. Uh, yeah, they're just lethal. But Freddie Corbett, he's got an interesting point while we're on the Roosters. Sam Walker uh, to outshine supercoach-wise Kiri by far this year and especially early on. Is he crazy? Not crazy. Nah, no. look. Sammy Walker proved last year he's got massive points in him, but he's got ma- he's got a very very low floor if he if he doesn't get the attacking stats that you're looking for. Um, oh, I like it. I like it. I like the play, if, especially if Nave's out. But I I personally won't go there. I want a better defensive defensive halfback and a better, just a better worker off the ball as well, like someone who's out doing stuff. Whereas Sammy Walker's still young. He's Still got a lot of game to develop, if you know what I mean. So he's, don't get me wrong, he'll be a period where he, he'll, you'll probably want to get him this year. But I think Sam Walker needs, if he hasn't evolved his game at all, if he's still going to play the exact same way he did last year, team's worked him out. And he got he started to get exposed there towards the end. So if he hasn't learnt the short ball and other tricks to his Trade. belt, he can. Yeah. I think he'll struggle. All right, uh, another quick one from Watto. Best mid-range second rower. Uh, I've got Ola Ka- Oh, he's just over, probably. I am going... He, he's, he's cheapy. I'm going Ted by Moroa. That's the one I was going to pop out, He's too. cheap, but that's your problem. If he, He's not one of them ones that you can go under and and find someone cheaper than him to, to plug the hole. He's yeah. the bottom dollar guy, and you've... You've got to wait for him to make the but money. But I, I, I Run think the risk he, of him not. I think he's... A genuine chance of making decent coin. I'll go Patrick Carrigan. What's he worth? Um, four hundred and something low four hundreds. I think it was. Well, that's not too bad. What start in front row? You reckon up there? Four hundred and sixty-two and a half. That's okay. It's not bad. What's the next one, does he? All right, Timmy's been chiming in on the comments because he's been running the comments for us in the stream tonight. Uh, he reckons no harsh, Juzzy. That's crazy. Uh, and apparently Fafita has been cleared of injury and he should play this weekend. So oh. does that bring Defi back into your starting sides if he's cleared of injury? Money-wise, no. If I had money, 100%. 100%. Right. Yeah, if everything even falls if into place. In, even if he was injured. And he, he was still named. You'd still think, geez, I've got to have the bloke. Yeah, he has six runs and scores 150. 
Henry Brind wants to know biggest pod and any pod. Olakwatu biggest pod. I'm not sure of his ownership, but to be honest with you, so yeah. yeah. Biggest pod will probably be for me. Probably Tessie New if I end up going that way. At the moment, for me, I'm looking at Tessie New in the centre wings. He's expensive though. He's five hundred and eleven. And then what does he mean by antipod? Like, go against the grain where everyone's going, so like... So you're going against Teddy Pappy? Yeah, so you'd be going what? You'd be going Trell. Or KP? Yeah, so Trell, Trell KP instead. That's the antipod. And the, any, everyone, what they're saying is because everyone's going Teddy, you go the other way. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. The antipod and the top guy. I don't know if he's going to end up being a pod, but Jackson Hastings? No, he won't be a pod. He should be in 25% of teams at least. Yeah. Yeah. He's a cheap half. That That's where points come from at the moment. Otherwise, yeah, probably Momorowski and whoever ties up that centre spot over at the Roosters, especially if Momo gets the goal kicking. Mm-hmm. Uh, Any pod going against the grain? Don't know. I don't think I've got anything going against the grain at this point. I'm trying to completely avoid that because I do that each year and it ends in disaster. Uh, Hayes Dunster, I think people are actually going with him. Yeah, well, well they've got no um, Sivo for so many games and they've got, well, Fergo's locked up in Japanese jail. Yeah, well, then he doesn't have the contract with Parramatta anyway. So there's no winger there. I think Will Panasini was... So yeah, he'll get around. He's I've heard him get, doubted. He said to get one wing spot, I think, and I think Hayes Dunster was set to get the other. So both could be good looks. I just don't trust that he was attack enough. But well, you go, you know, you go the Sivo side because that's Guffo seems to. That's the side Guffo seems to chime in on the most. And Which side does Moses like to play though? He's stuck. He's back out on the right hand side. Yeah. So that's Jill it. Bags is back out there on the left with Sean Lane. You'd have to think. And, yeah, whoever they've got. All right. Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, well, my antipod would be Husk. No Husk. No Husk. Oh, well, there you 52% go. 52% own him, so. Already well, 52% well, there you go. have him already. There's my antipod, because I've already said I'm probably not going. And Supply oh, Morale is 38%, so. Oh, shit. So he's second most owned dude in Super Games. Uh, Kane Darcy wants to know thoughts on Lomax, and Matty Drew wants him to be quiet. Although Lomax did make my Lomax has had two solid years in a row. So now, last year was very injury affected. I think he only averaged fifty five last year. The ball but, wasn't bouncing for him like the year before. That's true. I'll give you that. But yeah, he still looked fairly solid. Um. He might not have scored incredibly well, but the Dragons didn't do great last year that's, either. That's my biggest worry again this year, how the Dragons going to go. Yeah. I mean, well, look, they go against one of Glenn's golden rules, which is ceiling clubs. Go for the ceiling clubs. Uh, You've got to be really careful with those low ceiling clubs because more often than not, they're not going to get the points. So even if, especially if you're relying on attacking stats, they're just not going to eventuate more often than not. So... I like the thought of Lomax, but yeah, the same thing. I think now with old mate there as well, they got a couple of better backs that are going to command a bit more ball. What's his name? Sloan. Sloan. Um, I can see him pinching some of them, them bouncing balls that normally fall into Lomax's hand in his hands. Played very well in the Indigenous game the other, other night, young Sloan, from what I've seen of him anyway. Um, yeah. So yeah, I... I I don't know. I, I personally can't afford Lomax or haven't even looked at him, to be honest. But he'd be a good way to go if you if you want to go that way, I feel. He does kick the goals. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say no to him. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'd say to Kane, get on him if you Just want to get on him. Just under 500k. We could be your guy, you know what I mean? Your marquee. All right, Shane Foote reckons Cook ain't playing 80. Is he still on your hit list if he's not playing the full 80? If you're sharing the hook? Um, uh, who do they have over Mark there? Mark Zula. Yeah, there you names. go. Um, I still think Cookie plays 80. 
I still think Cookie plays 80. Um, if not, if he's not, well, Reed Marnie's the guy to go to. <laughs> and, unless you want to take the hit for that one week that Harry's out. I think it's only one week. So... I'm if seriously had, considering it. If I had the money, if I had the money, I'd I'd probably take the hit. At the moment, though, I'm expecting Cookie to get me to Harry Grant. Hopefully. All right, Jaden Chapman wants to know: Is Tyson Gamble a smoky? I mean, he is, but do you really want to be gambling like that in your halves? If well, he locks know. down a spot, but... you know about the gamble. You've had the gamble. I did, I did. I took the gamble, but I only took him as enough. As soon as he got minutes, I got him out of my side because, well, yeah. I had him for a while. Good. Punched out a few fifty sixties. So with that there, that's my problem with with the Broncos. They haven't actually said who his halves partner is yet. Gamble, Kelly. Yeah, there's a couple of guys up there. You got Walters as well. Yeah. Um so yeah, I don't know. That's the gamble with having anyone that's not A Ray up there. You don't know who his halves partner will be. Yeah. And the way they've changed him over the last two years. Well, that's it. First season back, unless they've really locked one down and they're going to commit to, there's a really good chance they're actually going to cycle through Haas partners in real game experience. To Again. sort of, yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, they've got a, this time they've got a brand new halfback, though. Or is A Ray more there to help guide the club and train up the next generation? Oh, you'd have to he's think there to he's, he's there to get him some wins, <clears throat> man. They, they're, they're a club with high expectations, Brisbane. That, that would be up. That would be upsetting to them having a wooden spoon and and not at least getting into the eight the following year. You know, like that would be upsetting to their club mantra, if you know what I mean. Their club that expects big things from their players and their coaches have done since as long as I can remember. Granted, they probably rorted some salary caps here and there, but who gives a fuck? They got away with it good on them. But yeah, I I well, can't I can't see maybe I can't see him. Chopping and changing as much. So hopefully, picks and sticks at least for a couple of weeks just to see. Like, well, it'd be interesting to see if the plan is long term. If Stags is going to be the six, and whether he does go there this year or not. Uh, they I got think a lot of the outside backs coming through. I think that that was just all talk to get just him to get some him more some money. Um, I, he's not a six. No oh. offense to the bloke. Some blokes are just better at what they are. Like. Jack Shadow Carr's not a fullback. But we've never seen him play six. So it's hard to say. Yeah, we haven't, but... You guys said Trell wasn't a fullback, though, too. He wasn't to start with that to make him. So there you go. That's it. But people can change. I knew he had to him, but yeah. But you, you know what? You, you, As a club, you've got to be willing to cop another hit year. And they might South be if they're part a of a... Yeah, they South might be. They took them fucking 60 years to win a premiership or something, but they don't give a fuck. <laughs> Brisbane won heaps, like a lot. I get what you're saying. And they have an expectation of getting back there quickly. And But Benny knows what's going on. Ben, Benny's got his finger on the pulse, and you've got to remember, Benny's only just gotten up there. This is his first full year there. He only moved mid-year last year, and that was just that way he could get ahead well, and I get can... every, yeah, everything ready for pre-season. you got... He's a football mind, mate. You know he's father-in-law, he's a. Eh? But I don't, don't care, but the point is... He doesn't It's care. Wayne Bennett. Has nothing to do with this. No, it's just you would have watched him be the, an operator for the last five years. No, you'd still be ringing years. him up too and saying, hey, Wayne. Yeah, you but you know what? He, this? Brisbane was Wayne Bennett for a long, long time, especially when Benny Eichen was a member of the fucking Brisbane fold. The point is you've got a, you've got a few Brisbane, Brisbane alum all from the same era now, trying to manage that club. And it's from the Premiership era. Um, so They've look, got a lot of work to do. They do. And maybe they're well aware of that. You know, they picked up their first wooden spoon only a couple of years ago. So maybe they are just going to sort of go into a bit of a rebuilding phase and know, you know what, it's going to take us two, three years. The other one but then actually, we'll be right where we want to be. The other one I forgot about was um, Ezra Mann. Um, massive raps on Ezra Mann as a six. Coming through great at Brisbane, and they've re-signed him, so the Reese Walsh thing didn't happen again, where they lose enough good young talent. So he could easily push all the other two blokes or three blokes we we're just talking about out of the way for that six. I mean, it's a young side at Brisbane, and there it's an emerging side. So let's wait and see what happens. Got any questions? No, that's it. The final one was uh, just a comment from someone saying they think SJ is going to step up this year, uh, being around a young side. 
sort of it's him and Nicarima that have to step up, really. Yeah, but he's just going to step up and be that game manager role kind of thing where it doesn't let the Cooper Cronk, where he's not going to translate to super coach, or is he going to step up? Well, he's not going to rewind the clock, obviously, because he's not fast enough anymore with his bung knees and hemis and calves and whatever else. That's it. Let's see what happens. I'm not sure. I mean, I'm personally not going <laughs> going near him. But uh, I hope he proves me wrong, and I hope I can own him throughout the year sometime. All righty. I think that's it from us. Thank you very much for joining us uh, for another week. We have enjoyed having your company. Make sure you hit up supercoach360.com. Uh, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts as well. Subscribe to us on all your favorite podcast apps. Uh, say good day on the Facebook. Uh, if you want to win a ring, you can do that through Supercoach Champion. Uh, you can win a ring from www.supercoachchampion.com. Just by getting a video shout out, we're getting closer and closer to footy season. So do what you can. Um, yeah. Thank you very much for listening. Don't forget to check out Sports Nut on Facebook. And yeah, enjoy the trials this weekend. We've got a full slate of trials. So excited for that. But, uh, I mean, look, we're not expecting full strength sides yet, but good to see a bit of footy. We're getting there. So thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you next week. See Bye. you guys. Peace.